Hey everyone, welcome back to Two Guys Tech. I'm Rob, and today we're going to be talking about how you can use a NAS server to stream movies and TV shows inside of your local network without using an outside streaming service like Netflix or Hulu. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then stick around and we'll get into it right after the intro. <laughs> So before we get started, I want to give a huge thanks to Synology for sending us this disk station DS1621 Plus, as well as six of the eight terabyte Seagate drives for review. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and see what you get inside of the box. At the very top, you get a box of accessories and it has everything you'll need to set up the NAS like a power cable, some ethernet cables, replacement screws, and the keys to lock the drive bays in the front. Below that box, there's also a quick start guide, and once you take out the packaging foam, the Synology is the only thing left. As we mentioned before, this is a DS1621 Plus model, meaning it has six drive bays and a quad-core Ryzen V1500B processor. Our unit also came preloaded with eight gigabytes of RAM right from Synology, but these usually ship with four gigabytes of memory from the factory. On the back of the NAS, things are pretty simple. We've got a power port, a couple of USB ports that can be used for things like portable hard drives, getting data from battery backups, and powering anything else that uses a USB plug. To the right of those, we have four gigabit ethernet ports, and these are actually really neat because they all support link aggregation and failover. This means that if you plug all four of these into a 10 gigabit switch that's compatible with link aggregation, you could actually run this NAS at up to 4 gigabit, and if one of the cables or ports ever fail while it's running, the NAS will use the connections that it still has. And finally, to the right of those, there's a pair of eSATA ports, which allows you to add up to two more 5 bay Synology expansion units for a total of 16 drive bays. This is a much better solution than having to purchase a new NAS every time you want to increase your available storage. There's also a cover for some of the expansion cards that Synology offers for this NAS, like 10 gigabit RJ45 or SFP connectors for a really fast network connection. Moving around to the front, we have six drive bays, each of which support up to a single 16 terabyte SATA 3 hard drive or SSD. These bays are very easy to use and install drives in, which we'll talk about in a minute. We also have another USB port on the bottom and a little power button next to the status lights on top. With the outside out of the way, let's start by setting up this NAS and getting it ready for serving movies and files over our network. Obviously, the first thing we need to do is add some drives. And Synology makes this very easy with these toolless drive bays. For 3.5 inch drives, all you need to do is take off these fastening panels, set the drive in, and snap the fastening panels back in place. We did that for each of the 8 terabyte drives that we have for a total of 48 terabytes of storage in this compact little NAS, which is really impressive, especially compared to our old self-built NAS that we built in this rather large PC case. Next, we also wanted to install an NVMe cache drive to increase the performance of this NAS before we lock the drives in. So we ordered a Synology cache drive but unfortunately, it wouldn't have arrived in time for this video, so we had to improvise. And after some research, we ended up getting this 500 gigabyte SK Hynix SSD drive, which should work with no problems. Now, as we mentioned, this isn't a Synology NVMe drive, and it's not certified by Synology to be compatible with this NAS. But as you'll see when we set up the software, it shows up in DSM just fine. Installing NVMe cache is really easy. All you have to do is take out the hard drives if you've already installed them, and inside the NAS on the left, there are two slots. Nearest to the front is slot one, and the next one is slot two. Now, we only have one SSD, so we're gonna install it in slot one, meaning this will only work as read cache. But if you have two NVMe drives, you can actually set up both read and write cache to boost the speed of this Synology even further. All you have to do to install the SSD is set the M.2 drive in the slot, push it back, and push the locking tab up until the drive clicks all the way in. Once all the drives were in, it was actually time to hook up the NAS with the included Ethernet cable and power cable. For the software setup, I'm going to hand this over to my son Logan 
so he can show you how to install DSM, set up the drives, and install Plex Media Server on the Synology NAS. All right, hey there everyone, I'm Logan, and we just got the Synology NAS set up and it's turned on, and we have not navigated to it yet in any kind of a web browser. We haven't done any setup so far. So we're just gonna take a quick look at how hard these actually are to set up for the very first time, and let's get going. So the quick start guide says to navigate to http colon slash slash Synology NAS colon 5000. So it should already have a host name on the network. So I'm just gonna go straight there. And it does look like it's loading up here. All right, so you can see this is the Synology DS1621. And let's go ahead and set up the NAS. Um, all right, so I want to install the newest version of DSM, which is like the software, the operating system that runs on these NASs. So I'll go ahead and allow it to install. Um, these are clean drives that are in there right now. All the eight terabyte drives are completely clean. There's no data on them. If you do put drives in there at the first time setup, you need to make sure you take them out before you actually install DSM here. So you understand all the data on these hard drives will be removed. Okay, and your Synology NAS will be up ready in approximately 10 minutes. Please do not turn off the power during this procedure. And it looks like it's just going to be setting up DSM right on the NAS itself. So we'll come back once that's done. All right, and we're back, and the first thing that uh, the Synology wants us to do is create an administrator account for the Synology NAS. So basically, you have to make an account to secure the NAS. Um, this includes things like the server name, uh, the username, password, etc. So I'm going to go ahead. It's doing a bunch of crazy stuff. I'm going to go ahead and put in some information that I already have saved and ready to go, and we'll come back after that. Okay, and as you can see, I put in a server name, username, password, and I confirmed that password. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to set up the account I'm going to save that. So this essentially allows you to access the NAS outside your network. I'm not actually that worried about it. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and skip the step. So far I'm finding this is a very, very intuitive software to use. I won't do that right now. So let's go. Okay, so from now on when a uh, new DSM update is ready, your Synology NAS will automatically check if the update patch addresses any issues in your current DSM configuration and services in use, and accordingly determine whether to notify you of such an update. Interesting. All right, device analytics. Um, make sure you read through all of this documentation. We're going to go ahead and continue. So, tip number one, access all built-in and installed packages from the main menu. So this is kind of very much uh, similar to a bit of a Windows interface kind of the same desktop paradigm. I find it very intuitive so far. So there's a package center, you can get more packages, more settings are available at the control panel. All right, so we're here at the home screen of this Synology NAS and we're starting from a completely blank slate. The NAS has just been set up with everything it needs. And now we're actually gonna go ahead and set things up. So the first place I wanna go is the storage manager. And this is essentially going to show you how many, as you can see, unused drives we have right now. We have six drives, and it'll let us start setting up storage pools. So I'm going to create a storage pool, and you have two different options here. You can either create a storage pool for better performance. This only supports a single volume, but does provide better performance, or a higher flexibility storage pool. Um, this is if you want multiple volumes, etc. We just want to use better performance. You only need a single volume for the pools that we're going to be making here. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on. And I want to create two pools. The first pool is going to be for storing all of our YouTube projects because the Synology really works well not only into storing movies and all that as like a Flex Media server, but also as something that we can use in our, you know, our workflow as content creators here on YouTube creating videos. So with that, I want to probably start off by creating the YouTube projects pool. So let's just punch that in here. YouTube projects. And there are different RAID types you can select here. Um, I believe you have more types if you had chosen to go with the um, more flexibility option. We just want this. So I'm going to set this up in a RAID 1, which typically uses two drives. And that means I'm going to have completely redundant data. So if one of the drives dies in our RAID 1 that we're holding all of our YouTube videos on, we'll still have the other drive with all the data. We can get a new drive, mirror it on, and all of our data will be safe, even if one of the drives dies. 
So, as you can see here, we have all these drives. I'm just going to be using probably the last, uh, no, the first two drives. The first two drives are going to be dedicated to YouTube videos right here. So keep in mind that with a RAID 1, we have two 8 terabyte drives, but because they're redundant, we're actually losing half that capacity. So even though that's a total of 16 terabytes, we're, we're only gonna be using eight terabytes. We're going, only gonna have eight terabytes accessible, which I think is a fair trade-off. So let's continue. All the data on the newly added drive will be erased. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes, I am. Um, I'm not worried about performing a drive check right now. You could and you should if you're setting up this NAS just for the first time. But in the interest of making this video a little bit quicker, I'm not going to be doing the bad sector check. So let's continue. And here's a quick summary of all the changes we're going to be making. I'm going to put that on drive one and drive two. Apply. And this is actually going to create a RAID array that we can store all of our YouTube videos on. So before using the space on storage pools, you have to create a volume first. You can go to the volume page to create a volume after the storage pool creation is complete. So this is basically showing us we have one storage pool that has the description YouTube projects, RAID 1, that means it has data protection as I mentioned earlier, and we have a total capacity, available capacity of 8 terabytes, or 7.27. So now that we have the pool, this is basically imagine as a virtual drive that we're able to partition. So I could create a volume right now. I'm going to wait until I actually add our second storage pool for our movies. So there's a quick summary of the changes we're going to make. Let's apply. I really feel like DSM makes this very simple, very simple to manage all of the all of your drives. You know, um, there we go. We have two storage pools right now. Again, storage pool one is for our YouTube projects, which has redundant storage, and storage pool two is just for our movies. Let's move on to the volumes tab where we can actually start creating volumes. Now, we already have storage pools I've created, so we're limited to only using custom. Quick is unfortunately grayed out, which is fine. I'm going to choose an existing storage pool to create this on, and let's do that on storage pool one, which again is the YouTube storage pool. So that's about eight terabytes available capacity. Um, let's use the default file system of BTRFS. Let's go ahead and punch in the name of this as well, which is YouTube Projects. And we'll have an available capacity of about 7,447 gigabytes, right there. As you can see, that's the settings confirmation. That's what we're gonna be creating. Let's apply that. All right, and right here we have volume one, which is healthy and has our YouTube projects. Again, you can see this is RAID 1 with data protection which is exactly what we need. So we're going to go ahead and make another volume here. Again, same thing, I'm gonna go through all these and right now the only storage pool available that doesn't, that is not completely full with volumes is storage pool two, uh, which is a RAID zero of 32 terabytes. As you can tell, that is our movies volume. So let's call that movies, movie storage. And as you can see, 29,789 gigabytes. And let's apply that. And now we have two separate volumes across our six drives. So as you can see, the Synology is currently good. It's not doing anything right now. If it is uh, in the middle of doing something, it will let you know over here. But right now we are perfectly fine. So as we have our hard drive set up, we still need to set up the SSD cache. As you remember, we put in a about 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD into slot one, which is the read only cache configuration. If you have two drives, you can actually set up read and write cache. But for now, we basically just wanna be able to have cache for watching movies and stuff, which should hopefully help um, if we wanna have more clients watching movies and all that good stuff. So here is the read only cache option. Again, this is gonna be grayed out unless you have two SSDs. I want to mount this onto volume two, which is our movie storage. I could put it on YouTube projects. There's no good reason to though. So movie storage. And now I need to actually select the cache device, which is that one, the only one in the system. Again, an NVMe SSD of about 465 or 500 gigabytes. Let's go next. Again, the maximum should already be in there. Let's apply, and uh, by continuing, you will wipe your SSD, so make sure you are all good with that. This is a brand new unformatted SSD. I'm not worried about it. Say hit OK, 
and it will spin up the SSD cache for us, which will hopefully make the uh, movies share quite a bit faster. And there we go. SSD cache one is healthy. It is completely set up properly. So basically with all that, we have our drives perfectly set up in DSM and that was honestly very easy. But the next thing that I wanna do is actually set it up to where we can access the stuff from our network. And that should actually be quite easy. So Synology gives you the package center, which is kind of where you want to install all of your main utilities and things you're gonna be using on your NAS from. So let's go ahead and just search for Plex Media Server. And as you can see, first thing that pops up is Plex. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that. It's downloading right now. And Plex Media Server is starting. All right, and Plex Media Server is now running. And I think the next place I wanna go is check out the control panel because this should give us shared folder. And shared folder is actually where we can start adding network shares into the NAS. So let's go ahead and create one here. Um, let's see, the first one I'll do is YouTube projects, and this is going to be on volume one. Okay, and that is volume one. Again, volume two is our movie storage. Volume one is YouTube projects. And that's looking good. Not worried about encryption. You can actually encrypt the shared folders on your NAS if you want. That can be a very useful feature. I'm not gonna go ahead and use it. And again, some more advanced settings. For a basic share, don't worry about this. Let's just go ahead and go to next. And you can see, here's what we're actually going to be setting up on our NAS. All right, and the, you can also edit permissions, which it automatically pops up after you create the share. I'm not gonna change any of this. Let's just go ahead and continue. So as you can see, we now have one shared folder for our YouTube projects, which is perfect. So the next thing I'm gonna do is create a new shared folder, this time on volume two, which is our movie storage. And I'll just call this one movies. And let's go ahead and hit next. And just go through all this. Again, not worried about any of this stuff really. Keep everything the same, not worried about the permissions, just leave them as they are for now. Let's go ahead and hit okay. And now we have two different shared folders. And the next thing I think I want to do is actually go to Plex Media Server from my main web browser so I can sign in and get it all set up. And now, there we go, just like that, we are in the Plex Media Server setup. That took no more than probably two minutes. So let's go ahead, yeah, not worried about that. Um, let's see, let's call this Synology Server. And I'm not worried about accessing media outside the home. Let's go ahead and do next. All right, and again, this is primarily gonna be used for movies. I could add music later because we do have quite a bit of music, but I'm just gonna do movies, go next, and add a folder. And right here, you're actually going to go to volume two, which is again, our 32 terabyte volume. And we have the movie shared folder right here. And add that. And there we go. We've added the movies library, uses that. And not worried about that. That's just setting things up. And we now have a empty Plex Media Server installation. So you can see right there, library is empty, but that is good to go. So the next thing I think we're gonna go ahead and do is run a few speed tests, see how quick the Synology really is copying some data. And we'll throw some movies on it, see how it streams and all that good stuff. All right, so now we're actually in the file explorer here on Windows and I've mounted the network shares and this is pretty easy if you wanna go and do that. Just right click on this PC, map a network drive and then you'd go ahead and do uh, TGT server and then the name of the share, which is like uh, the name of the shared folder. So movies or YouTube projects or anything like that. And then you just sign in, which I've already done as I said. So again, we have two perfect little shares right here. And we actually wanna go ahead and start copying stuff to them. So I have some data right here. This is a video that we've recently uploaded to the channel. It is 2.3 gigabytes. So it should hopefully give us a quick test to see how quick we can actually copy and read from the server. So I'm gonna go ahead, take it and copy it to the YouTube projects, which again is the redundant RAID array, which does not have any read cache. As you can see, Hovering right around 96 
megabytes per second, 97, somewhere around there. Copying pretty darn fast, which is very good when you're dealing with projects that could potentially be 50 to 100 gigabytes. So as you can see, it's holding pretty well. Um, I have gigabit ethernet going between the Synology into our router, which is a TP-Link AC5400, and then gigabit ethernet into my PC. So hopefully there should not be any bottlenecks with the network connection itself. So as you can see, we have copied to the YouTube projects share, and we're going to copy back and overwrite this file and see how quick we can read. See up to about 111, 112 megabytes per second. Remember, this is not megabits. This is megabytes per second. So as you can see, again, it's holding a pretty, pretty quick speed, which is very good to see. So now we've copied that again. Again, that was very, very quick for about 2.3 gigabyte file. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I think we've just about got this thing set up. So we're going to go ahead and throw some of our movies on here that we've ripped from 1080p and 4K Blu-rays, play them on Plex, and see how the Synology DS1621 performs. All right, so as you can see, it was actually pretty easy to get the software all set up on the NAS and even configure the drives for holding our movies and YouTube video projects. The convenience and flexibility of this NAS, along with its small form factor, are what makes it such a great solution. It can easily be adapted to fit your needs, no matter what you're planning on doing with it. All right, so the next thing we wanted to do is see just how well this NAS was able to stream 4K movies over our network using Plex Media Server. We started by watching our 4K Blu-ray rips of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings to really get a feel for the quality and performance of this NAS as a dedicated movie streamer, similar to other home theater oriented NAS servers on the market. We went ahead and used our Sony UBP X800 4K Blu-ray player as our source for this test and started watching movies through the gigabit ethernet connection running through our whole house. The Sony Blu-ray player picked up the Synology NAS right away and it was easy to get the movie started over the Plex DLNA server. The movie never dropped out or skipped while we were watching it, and as far as we could tell, it looked and sounded just as good as the original 4K disc. Of course, you could also stream these movies directly through the Plex app on any device, which makes using the Synology as a media server even easier. Doing this also allowed us to get a feel for just how good the NAS is at transcoding 4K content, and we're pretty shocked at just how well it worked. The NAS was able to transcode a 4K Blu-ray rip into a browser-friendly 4K stream at 80 megabits per second without ever skipping a beat. Once we started using clients that supported direct play, we managed to get six 4K streams all running different devices at the same time, which is far better than our old NAS was ever capable of. So we hope that this quick setup and demo really gives you some great ideas as to just a few of the things that you can do with a Synology NAS. We're very happy with this setup and it serves both our movie streaming needs as well as our YouTube content creation needs. We really do think this is a great mass storage solution, whether you're planning on using it as a Plex media server, general storage for a business, or even running a bunch of virtual machines for separate tasks and different operating systems, Synology managed to fit all of that convenience and functionality into one box at a very affordable price. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. Again, we want to give a huge thanks to Synology for sending us this DS1621 Plus for review and making this video possible. Make sure you check out their website at the link in the description below. If you have any questions or comments about this NAS or how we set it up, please let us know down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. And as always, have an awesome day.